Hey, what's up everyone? Hopefully all y'all had a awesome New Year's. I did, you know, I got to spend some time with someone that's very special to me. And, you know, let me know what you guys' New Year's resolution is. Let me know down at the bottom in the comments. And, you know, mine is to be, uh, try to work on myself and also try to be more interactive with y'all as part of my, my fan base, I guess. So, but today we got something going that's very special, you know, that once you take time to sit and make this, they'll show anybody how much you mean to them because it takes a long time to make and it takes some time to make, especially when you do it with your hands. So let's get it going. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and get this get this dough going for the pasta. Um, here it all depends uh, what type of flour you use. If you use AP or if you use double zero, uh, the difference is AP is going to give you more of that uh, chewy, but it's not bad. And double zero, which is kind of hard to find, is more of an exotic flower. is going to give you more of that silky smooth S type of pasta. But here I'm using two cups of AP flour, two eggs, and six yolks. And then a two tablespoons of olive oil. The olive oil is going to make the dough uh, a little bit more pliable if you're rolling it by hand. So, uh, here... Uh, you know, I'm gonna mix this up a little bit um, not too much you don't want to put too much you don't want to put air in it so just enough to get the eggs uh, the egg yolks a little bit broken up and then we're gonna make a well out of the flour make a big one uh, bigger than you think so you don't have too much of a spillage you're gonna pour that right into the well of the flour and then you're gonna go and get that little mix of rooney you know um, once that happens the dough starts to form Then go ahead and hit it with a couple pinches of salt. Uh, this is gonna help bring out the flavors of everything. And then you're gonna go and hit it with a little bit of a whiskey business, as it will. Um, do it slow so everything gets incorporated as slow as possible. Um, if stuff starts to fall like this, don't worry about it. Um, just mix it up as much as possible. When you start to see a little bit of uh, the dough start to form, go ahead and uh, get your hands dirty. Here, um, I saw that my dough was a little too dry. Uh, so what you do here is take one more egg, uh, mix it with a little bit of water, and then pour it a little bit on top of it at a time until you get the uh, wetness that you desire. If it's a little too dry, that's easy peasy. Just go ahead and take some more flour and put it over the top and uh, knead it. I see a little bit of the dough starting and take some of that olive oil you're gonna go ahead and uh, mix that into the dough the same way you did the egg if it was too dry just make it pour a little bit in there and knead it in together so here um, this is gonna be the hard part for a lot of people um, here you're gonna need for at least seven to ten minutes uh, set a timer because it's gonna need uh, seven or ten minutes there's no uh, there's no always oh, I can do it faster this is gonna need for about seven to ten minutes uh, maybe more depends um, until you get a nice smooth dough on the outside uh, and then you're gonna go and set that to the side and let that rest for about 30 minutes or so um, and so it gives that dough nice and relaxed from the gluten.
you can see it starts to smooth out a little bit so how do you know you're done or not you're gonna take it uh, put it into a bowl like this and then you're gonna go and press it if it starts to spring back like this uh, that's how you know you needed it enough and you can go and put this wrap it up and set it aside While the dough rests, we're going to go and get our veg prep ready. So we're going to take the shallots and we're going to do a, a small dice on them. So you're gonna, what you're going to do is cut the ends off, put it down the center, and do it the same as you would uh, you dice an onion, just on a lot smaller scale. I know you guys can't see this, but while cutting these shallots, my eyes were bawling. That's how you know you got some good onions and shallots, you know. It got to get all them juices all, all up in your eyes. If you guys have that a uh, little bit of a uh, tip, if you put your head in the freezer for a little bit, it freezes your tear ducts, and it'll stop crying. And if you've been following me for a bit, you know I always gotta have garlic and something, you know. Especially when you have some sort of onion and garlic, you always gotta have garlic. So here you're gonna smash these up, uh, peel them off, and you're gonna do hit it with a little bit of thin slice. Uh, you don't have to go super thin with it. This isn't good, fellas, when you're trying to hit that uh, pasta or that pasta sauce with that thin slice garlic so it melts. So uh, this is just gonna be for the sauce itself so go ahead and give it a thin slice You guys know I love some heat here. I took a jalapeno, uh, de-seeded it, got all the seeds out. Uh, then I hit it with a little bit of a thinly slice. I pressed it down and sliced it and I uh, hit it with a little bit of a, a small chop on it. Uh, doesn't have to be too big, doesn't have to be too small. It's gonna cook down anyway. For the mushrooms, they're optional. Um, I didn't use them, I forgot all about them actually, but here, if you're gonna use the mushrooms, just pull off the stems and uh, thin them slice them. And you're gonna throw this in the sauce when you uh, go ahead and make it for the chicken. Uh, you're gonna saute it with, um, with the shallots and garlic uh, and you wanna make sure you get all the water out uh, when you're cooking them. For these red boys, he's gonna go and slice the top off and we're gonna quarter these. Uh, these are gonna go into the oven anyway, so just get a little bit of a uh, quarter them and should be golden.
for the cilantro just go ahead and pick the leaves off the stems and give it a good wrap and uh, do a a little bit of a fine chop on these it's gonna be a garnish to go over the top uh, you don't want it too big but you don't want it too small it's gonna give it a nice green pop Now that our veg prep is done, we're going to go and move on to the chicken titties. So what we're going to do is put these into a Ziploc bag or you can use saran wrap. I just had a Ziploc bag. It's a little bit thicker so it stays together. And we're going to do um, here, I used a rolling pin, but you can also use a pan, a heavy pan or a cast iron pan. And you're going to flatten these out. Uh, till about a quarter of an inch and this is going to help them cook evenly and uh, faster so you don't have to be spending time trying to cook them. Now that our chicken boobies are flattened, we're going to go and prep our tomatoes and our roasted garlic. So what you're going to do is take a uh, baking sheet um, and I just used um, Tin foil, uh, you don't have to use that, I just used it. You can also use uh, parchment paper or if you have the um, actual like reusable parchment paper, so that work too. Um, and then we're gonna do, we're gonna make a smaller one for our garlic. And we're gonna place our garlic in there, hit a little bit of uh, olive oil and some salt. And we're gonna go and close that up. We're gonna roast, this is gonna be the roasted garlic for the sauce one to the pasta. Then our red boy is gonna go in there. Uh, you can also hit it with a little bit of olive oil and a salt. Then we're gonna bump it up a notch, bam style. Um, then we're gonna have a little bit of a Tuscan heat. Um, this is normally an Italian seasoning that's good for uh, roasting stuff, but if you don't have it, uh, you can go ahead and make your own. It just requires some rosemary, basil, parsley, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, red chili flake, dry thyme, cracked black pepper and some dried lemon zest. It's easy to make, but it makes everything that you roast delicious. So go ahead and hit that for a little bit of that. And you're gonna put this into an oven at 450 for about, I would say 20 minutes or until you get a nice color on the outside of tomatoes. While those are in the oven, your pasta should be ready to roll out. So here you're gonna cut this into little triangles and you're going to take one at a time and you're going to roll it out this is going to take some time to do uh that's what they say this is definitely uh something you do for a loved one because uh, it, it would take some time to roll out um here uh, when you roll it out um i just roll it out a little bit and then folded it back in to get a nice evenness through the whole pasta itself um you're going to roll this out until you get a, about a uh, transparent where you can see your fingers through the, the old saying is uh, with the pasta you should be able to read a love letter through it because uh, it takes a lot of love to make a uh, real fresh pasta so um, once you roll it out and you get a nice thinness to it then we're gonna go ahead and cut it up
now that we got it to the thinness that uh, you're looking for you can kind of see that you can see through it you can see my cutting board through it so that's what I'm looking for uh, what we're gonna do is just square this off uh, to get it of a better and a cleaner cut um, here I use my pizza cutter um, if you don't have a pizza cutter you can just use your knife as you saw earlier um, this is just gonna make sure I get a good even pasta you're gonna fold the ends into the center then you're gonna take the ends and throw it back into the center again um, also, don't forget to throw a little bit of uh, flour in here that's going to keep everything from sticking. And we're going to do, I did these a little bit thicker, but you usually want to do these about a quarter of an inch or so, a little bit less. Uh, it's going to keep your pasta smaller and it's going to cook faster. So, just do this with the rest of them. Also, um, a little tip here, um, you can also freeze this. Um, so once you got it cut up or you got an extra dough, you can go ahead and throw it into the freezer and it'll be good for a couple of weeks so it's time to make pasta. Yeah, this would be better if you guys had someone to help you do it. Uh, this is a hard task. That's why I say <laughs> definitely you better be doing this for somebody that you love or someone that means a lot to you because it is hard work. Uh, I was, I'm over here sweating trying to uh, roll out dough. So. So you got all your dough rolled out and cut, you're going to put this into a bowl and uh, hit it with some flour and get everything mixed in there and this is going to keep it from sticking to each other. Also it's going to keep it from sticking while you put it in the water. Now it's time to get our water to a boil. So here um, I say season this a little bit more than you expect uh, i definitely want to taste this um because since the uh, the actual pasta is not going to stay in there for very long you want to salt this a little more because the pasta is going to absorb the water and it's going to season the actual pasta itself so don't be afraid to put some salt into that water it won't hurt you Once you got that water to a boil, you're gonna go and throw your pasta in here. Um, once you got, you wanna try to separate the pasta as you put it in there so it doesn't stick to each other. Um, once you do that, you're gonna give it a good stir uh, just to make sure that all the pasta's in there is not gonna stick. And this is gonna cook for about three to five minutes at the maximum seven or until you get the doneness that you want. You went El Dente, you don't want it chewy, but you don't want it uh, too hard. This is what do you mean when you overcook it? I cooked mine for about uh, four minutes and it was perfect. Once it's done, you're gonna go and strain it and you're gonna run some uh, cold water over it and throw some ice in it. This is gonna stop the cooking process because we're gonna throw this back into a pan anyway for the sauce. Now it's time to get our bath ready for our chicken boobies. So you're gonna take some olive oil or some avocado oil. I used avocado because I'm gonna try it out. You're gonna take these and you're gonna put these skin side down and you're gonna make sure you lay it away from you. So just in case you get a little pop, you don't get a little pop onto your 
pan or skin. Uh, then you're going to hit these with some seasoning, uh, the same season that you use pretty much for your tomatoes, salt, pepper, and that uh, Tuscan heat. And then you should be golden. Just let these cook uh, until you get a nice color on them. You know, as I like to say, if there's no color, there's no flavor. So you're going to cook these for about, uh, I would say about three to four minutes per side. Um, I'd cook most of them on the skin side down and then cook the rest on the bottom side because uh, I want to get a nice color. As you can see, I flipped it over. I got a real beautiful color on them. Uh, and that was after about four minutes. So um, cook them as much as you need. I don't know how much. It depends how big you get them. Once those chicken boobies are done, go ahead and put them to the side and let them rest for a little bit. Get them juices nice and incorporated and you're going to work on our sauce. So here I used two cups of my veggie stock that I had. I still have some left over. I need to make some more actually. So um, once, that, once that's done, you can use pretty much any stock that you want. Um, chicken would be good because you're using chicken anyway. So uh, once that heats up a little bit, you're going to go and th throw some of, uh, I, would, I used about three tablespoons of cream cheese. Uh, once that gets warmed up, you're going to go ahead and give that a good mix to get everything broken up. You're going to bring it up to a little bit of a high simmer. We're going to hit it with some uh, seasoning, salt, pepper. Uh, and then you're going to go ahead and throw your shallots and your garlic in there. Then you're going to mash up that garlic though. Um, because it's roasted but it should break up pretty easily uh, that you got it roasted um, make sure you get a nice break up and you're gonna give it a good mix it's gonna really give it a really nice uh, flavor to it now that everything is going you're gonna take some shredded uh, Parmesan cheese and you're gonna put a little bit in there. You don't wanna to put too much because you don't want it to think you still want it to be soft. So go ahead and throw about two to three tablespoons of it in there and give it a good mix to get everything nice and incorporated in that cheese and milk it until you get a little bit of a nice thick sauce. You know, I love my sauce just like women, thick. Now that our sauce is nice and ready, we're gonna go ahead and get incorporate everything all in together. So here, uh, I took my pan that I used for my chicken, wiped it out, uh, hit it with some oil, got it nice and little hot, threw my garlic in there and got that nice toasted brown look. Uh, then I took the rest of my uh, shallots and I threw it in there with it and got it nice and uh, translucent. Once everybody is mingling well together, hit a little bit of salt. You're gonna take that pasta and you're gonna throw all it in there. You're gonna throw all of it in there. Um, you can get a little bit of warm through. Once you get a little bit of warm through, then we're gonna go and throw that delicious sauce over the top. We're gonna give that a good mix. Uh, we're gonna make sure the pasta and the sauce are nice and covered.
once that sauce is in there and you got that pasta nice and smothered and covered just like you like it go ahead and uh, set that to the side and everything's done we're gonna go ahead and start plating this if your pasta is not getting covered right don't be afraid to throw a little bit of water in there uh, to thin it out and get a nice coverage over it uh, other than that you know let's get it going Well guys, that's pretty much wraps up the whole video itself. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, go don't forget to go and uh, smash that like button. And also, while you're here, why not subscribe so you guys don't miss any more how-to videos on uh, simple things that you guys can cook for your loved ones or your family. Uh, and they'll love you even more for it. Um, hopefully everybody had an awesome uh, New Year's. And hopefully you guys have as much success as you did more than success than you did last year, you know, especially with this whole COVID thing going on. So hopefully, I hope you guys see you guys back and have an awesome day. Peace.